think the next thing we want to do is actually see, we get a better feel for what the actual um, product is and, and the value that's from it. Um, now let's actually see it in, 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 in live. So Joe's going to start off and good job. See your screen. So uh, and actually show us the product in action. Right. Oh, okay. <clears throat> thank you very much, Tim. And uh, thank you very much, Kevin, for the great introduction. Um, as said, I want to set up a little demonstration so that you can see the products in action and a whole data virtualization ecosystem being available to you for all the benefits available that Kevin talked about. Uh, one slide here in PowerPoint, and it's basically to set the stage for the demonstration. Um, we're gonna be working with human capital. Specifically, I want to be able to look at the various information in my organization and analyze employee training and development. I just wanna see how people are doing, people are tracking for taking courses, understanding courses, and like I say, adding value to the organization as a whole. In this scenario, there are two tables, uh, two data sources that I want to work with. One is the company training curriculum or catalog, and that's a fairly static file, and that's resident within Postgres. So I wanna be able to access just as a starting point but the other file, which is the employee training completed uh, data set, is more volatile. As people are taking training throughout the day and as they're doing things online, my uh, training tracking system will update the CSV file that's in a shared folder, you know, as people complete things. So it's very volatile throughout the day. And my business needs to necessitate that I have access to that data on a very real-time basis or very close to real-time. And um, TDV supports all those scenarios. Uh, for purposes of this demonstration, we want to create our data virtualization ecosystem. I'm going to do that uh, in my demonstration by wearing two hats. I'm going to be a IT professional, so we'll get down into the bits and bytes. But then I want to stress the fact that this is not just an IT solution here. This is definitely for the business analyst. We work at the speed of business with this capability, and I'll illustrate that today. Okay, so I'm going to get out of PowerPoint and into my demonstration environment. Let me drag that up to my second monitor here. One second, please. There you go. And I trust we can see that this is my TIBCO Data Virtualization Studio. This is a Windows-based product, and this is available, like I say, probably in most cases to an IT professional, because we're going to get down into the weeds within access to data and setting up the uh, connections and all the other attributes towards that. I want to draw your attention to the top where it's all tab based in the usual way for a you know Windows uh, toolkit. Um, I'm going back to the uh, overall starting point within the studio and draw your attention to the shared folder. And this is the actual folder that shows the physical data sources that I have connections to. They're not set up in a virtual way. Like I say, these are the physical files. And they can be files within my organization. They can be files outside the organization. So it could be data feeds from government organizations, from, you know, like I say, public domains, et cetera. And they can be APIs that I can consume here. And I'm going to work with this, all these different data sources as I want. My two files I've actually set up here. I've, I've been working with this. And here are the files here. You'll recognize them basically by the way I named them. My CSV file, which is the training employee file, and my, oops, sorry, and here's my, uh, wait, 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 here's my Postgres file, there we go, uh, the one that actually has the training catalog in it, all right, so how did I establish these? All right, so here's what I would do as a starting step. Go up to my shared folder, right mouse click, and I have a number of options at my disposal, as you can see here, but I want to click on new, or at least uh, make that uh, pop up. And there are a whole array of different things that I can define here. And I'm gonna go into a new data source and I just let you draw your eye over all those different options. But when I go into a data source, now I'm going to have at my access here, all the different connection types that, uh, that Kevin talked about. 350 different types here are available. Data is you know, at your beck and call here. And what I'm going to do is type in post for accessing the Postgres connector. I'm going to go with uh, option 91. And then I can just continue on with that. And it'll hand, uh, you know, sort of guide me through the setup for accessing those data sources. I've already done that. I'm going to cancel here. And I would have done the same thing for my CSV file. Okay, excellent. With those definitions and those connections struck up, I'm going to double, you know, come to a double click or select the open option here. 
And now I'm getting into some of the information about the data source. This is basically the metadata or the columns that are resident within that data file. We actually access the DB database catalog here to give you this information. And as I hover over any of these columns, I get a pop-up just to give me more information about that column. What's its structure? What's its length? You know, in some cases, it even has the values that are available. It'll recognize some things as geographical in nature, et cetera. And I'm starting to get aware of the you know, contents of that file. You know, as a first time into the working with this file, it helps me get oriented. I may not know necessarily all the details about that data source. I clicked on this icon up at the top here, and this quite simply gives me, you know, the first, what, 50 records within my data. So again, I'm looking now at the raw data. So it's a data browser, and again, I get, can get oriented with this. Profiling and various other statistic capabilities are available, again, for me to uh, glean insights into the data source. One of the biggest things that Kevin talked about was our caching capability in order to make the data available with high performance. You know, the data needs here could be that it's a huge amount of data, but still, I don't want to be impeded by slow responses when work with those large data volumes. It might be real-time data, so I have to be able to access that, again, to get late-breaking insights into the data, what's happening within our organization. And caching absolutely supports all that. You know, and that drives productivity, right? Back to the user community. So we're able to do insights and, and, and visualizations and update our dashboards quickly and effectively. And within the caching option, I have the ability to define what is the cache database that we're going to use to house some of the information. If you have a in-house data standard like Snowflake or again, a high performance data engine, we can use that to, to cache, to be the cache for a lot of the actual data coming from our original data source. What I can do is dictate the refresh mode. So it can be a manual thing that refreshes the data in the cache. It can be done once, it can be done periodically. And I can even say it can be a full refresh or an incremental refresh so we can get the delta. So lots of options there, again, to make your environment as productive as possible to your end user community. So I'm gonna say no, again, I've already predefined a lot of the things for my example here. Um, I'm going to come up to my connection, a right mouse click on it. And the next option I would do would be to publish that. You know, there might be other things in between uh, before rather my publish step, but let's get to that point in time. And then what that does is take, take that connection and loads it into my composite data services into a database connection here. It is Postgres and it is uh, CSV in both these cases. And again, I have the ability to take a look at these. Um, I want to draw your attention to the naming convention I gave to these connections. I did a suffix of TDV for each one to indicate later in my demo that these are the actual virtual view, views and connections to these data sources. And again, I can double click on them and get to know more information about them, uh, much like I did with the original database. The reason I want to do that maybe uh, in terms of the virtual view is it may have changed. And this option data lineage gives me a whole insight as to what I've established for my connection. Now my two connections are pretty simple, but some of them can be very elaborate. Multiple data sources brought together and elaborate joins to be able to create extensive views, but all can be represented with a you know, pictorial representation that you see here. Um, everything is available from the starting point. So as I hover over these uh, pills, I get pop-up information as to what I'm looking at what is actually brought into the connection as a starting point. And if I go over to the other side, I can even see where these, this connection is used. And there are a bunch of flows that I've actually um, see that my business community has established for using this data source. You know, and the whole idea here is to maybe come in and understand what's going on. Maybe you've adopted this whole uh, management re uh, administration requirement because you just got the new job here. You want to see what your predecessor did for connections. This allows you to understand exactly what's happening within your data sources, your data connections, and, uh, and glean exactly what's going on, as you can see. Pop-ups are available. Double-click on everything to get more information. The pill I just uh, double-clicked on there is actually the linkage uh, pill or step that shows the actual fields in the source and how they're going to be rendered within my virtual view. And I've just taken everything by default. I can rearrange those linkages again if I want to get more elaborate, select other uh, 
you know, linkages between the, the, the two data sources, et cetera, define virtual fields, et cetera, et cetera. The one pill I want to draw your attention to is this one here. This one actually says, hey, do you know that you have struck up a, uh, an RBC policy? RBC stands for Row-Based Security. So one of the important things about this whole ecosystem is being able to establish data quality, data security, and even partitioning the data virtually so that you can take various parts of the data source and make it available to the people for consumption. They don't have to necessarily have access to everything. You may want to have that be the case. So what we can do is strike up a, uh, a business rule to establish role level security. And to do that, I now draw your attention to the left where I'm exploding my folders here for the users that I have established within my demonstration. So I'm the administrator. Here I am being a very IT oriented person. I'm working with all the capabilities here, but I know that in the business community, there's gonna be an HR administrator and that person is going to have special access rights as I'm defining. Doing this all centrally within this ecosystem, doing this all based upon what I want to do to throttle back information. And here's how I do that. So the administration tab, there's an option here to launch the, the server um, console. And this is analogous if you're a web focus user to the web focus console. It has the ability for me to see how things are happening with the server with regards to monitoring it and the number of options there. There is an event log that I can look at and see how things are happening by volume or problems or whatever else I, I need to be aware of when uh, this thing is up and operative. But here's, and there is a configuration number of options too, again, for tweaking this and even making it more secure. But with regards to me setting up the security for the users accessing this, a number of options are available. The three levels that I just hover over here are, you know, high level, medium level, and granular level for the user community, resource management, logon modules, et cetera, and then my role-based security. And I don't know if you notice, if I hover over that again, there is absolutely a column-based security capability here too. So what columns can people look and see? Um, I've only got one rule in here. It's very simple. I gave it a name. Let me edit that and show you how I can set this up. The name of the rule is here. Um, the actual rule as defined is toggled, is edited. And I set this up for a single user and it's gonna be for Mr. or Mrs. HR Administrator. I only want that person to see campus, which by the way is the first field within my data source. Uh, campus, okay, is available here. If I look at the actual view itself, sorry. Here we go, campus is the first column. All right, so back out of here and into my example. I only want them where value of virtual is found within the campus column. And I'm gonna cancel, cancel, I've already set this up. And now I'm going to toggle over to uh, leaving this uh, work environment. But I wanna stress the fact that I'm able to access all different data sources from all different points within their organization or outside. The connectors are varied in the options, 350 different types. I can define them. I can define very elaborate views. I can do it again with security and, and partition, log logical partition of the data with my role-based security and a number of other things, again, that Kevin has shared with us. So Tim introduced me and I've been with Information Builders a very long time and I have a bit of a bias towards web focus, but I wanna stress the fact, as Kevin did, that you can use the tool of your choice, be it Tableau, be it Click, be it even Excel. You know, Excel is fine. Da Excel users have a requirement to get at data. We know how many Excel users there are, there are out in the world they can absolutely use this as their data provisioner too. And here's, okay, now I'll let you decide whether I still have my IT hat on or not, but here's how I established the connection between Web Focus and TDV. And I have, I'm gonna be using the ODBC adapter in this case, and I have defined the connection, as you can see with uh, the name of it and the uh, uh, login capabilities. And you know what? I went in and I, I set up the TDV ODBC client. I gave it a name and that's the connection here back to my data source. So this is how I'm talking from Web Focus into uh, TDV. And then the next step would be with that all working effectively is to come up and show my DVM, DVMS objects. 
So access the catalog. And in this case, there are two available to me. I am working with my base app folder. There could be other folders, again, at my um, access rights. And I would click on these and I would do add and that generates the web focus metadata. And then the next steps would probably be to go into those metadata views and strike up business views, maybe um, defined fields. And again, whatever else makes those data views val val uh, sorry, um, valuable in with the web focus environment. Now I'm definitely turning my cap over to being a non-technical person. I'm launching Web Focus Designer, which allows me now to do analytics and understand and get insights from my data sources. I'm going to be working with uh, business apps. I double click on that. And there are my two options here. And please note that these are Web Focus master files or the metadata. They are going against my TDV virtual views and I can double click on those. And then I can start to create my visualization. I'm just going to do something very simply because it isn't so much about doing the analytics as it is accessing data. And here's my very simple uh, two-click visualization to access the campuses and see how volume is with regards to people taking courses in those campuses. And I see that I have my main campus, my virtual campus, and my west side campus. Okay, good. And what I'll do is I'll zing out of here, save this, say yes. And I'm going to put it into my folder and I'm going to give it the name of choice here. And I am going to overlay it as I did this earlier today. So, okay, now what's the next step? Oh, by the way, I'm in the Web Focus new, the new Web Focus hub. Um, if you haven't seen this, this is replacing the Web Focus homepage. It gives a whole lot more capability from a single point. In other words, while it's giving me access to the workspaces, and please note I'm the administrator here, it's giving me access to the, um, the uh, file uh, view of the folders and contents here so I can look at anything as I want. As I used to do for the web console, I have access to all the different settings in my web focus environment. So it's, it's one point access to a whole array of functionality in my environment. But I'm going to now log out, come back to my login, and do HR admin. And while it is my ID in Web Focus world, this is gonna to connect to my HR underscore admin within my TDV setting. And I log in and I come to the shared visualizations that I have. And you know what, if I went in, I created something, it's basically the same thing I'm gonna show you here. I double click on this and behind the scenes, I'm being, uh, filtered as to what data I can access. So there we go. I'm only accessing the virtual campus data, data, right? And so, you know, everything I do from this point on is throttled back to what I can access. As another person logs in and we set up a rule for them by user ID or group, again, everything is filtered in the background. And for, again, the web focus community, you, you were always able to do that with DBA, but that was in the metadata. Doing this through TDV allows a single point of declaration for all your filters. Filters, so that's that's very advantageous in itself. Now I'm still keeping my business hat on. I'm non-technical, and I'm going to now swing over into the second TDV toolkit, which is expressly built for the business community. And I log on, and, and as you can see, this one is browser-based. It's not the Windows-based example I showed you earlier. And as a starting point, I can see what I worked on historically. I can look at all the files, but I'm gonna click on what's owned by me. And I've been busy. There's a whole array of things here, but mostly what I want to draw to your attention are those two files that I have been working with all this point of time. My HR uh, training curriculum. And by the way, when you click on something, it gives you this little insight panel at the bottom. I want to click, uh, get rid of that and simultaneously uh, make current the other file because these are the two I'm going to work with and I'm going to create a new flow. And while this might sound like an ETL thing I'm establishing, it's really just a logical flow for making the data provision to me. And you know what? And I don't mean just me necessarily. It could be me and my peers as I can have this all available at a departmental level or whatever, again, is appropriate. So I want to strike up my joints and I've done that with my two files. There's a, a way to join these together by commonalities. It's uh, on the campus column and there could be more columns that I can join on if necessary. What I can do is specify what type of joint I want to work with here. 
And as I draw your attention to this little sample area, I have my West Side campus, I have my main campus, and I have my virtual campus here too, because I logged on as an administrator. But wait a minute, uh, uh, sorry, as administrator within the uh, uh, HR environment, but I could even throttle it for my purposes here. So let me do a filter at this point in time. Let me click on that. And everything is all very easy by uh, the guidance of this toolkit here. What I want to do is uh, strike up my uh, filter for campus. And I'm going to do the same thing I showed you earlier, but in this case, from the business user toolkit. And I'm going to say, uh, I could say virtual, but I'm going to say, I would like to have in this flow access to the main campus only. Check my spelling, apply that, everything looks good. Okay. And my query results, uh-huh. Oh, I got a double quote there. Okay, good, good, good. So back to this, back to this, okay. And that should make it all fine and dandy. The message was very informative. And now, I, as you can see, I'm only accessing main campus information. I'm happy with this. I want to publish this. So draw down the publish icon uh, onto my template, make that part of the flow. And now it's available for consumption by me, but definitely by whoever else I want to share this with and who are authorized to do so. I double click on the name and I'm going to say, this is my Amtex flow. And we'll press enter and have that now saved. Okay, good. And then I can come back and, and uh, be within my workbench as a starting point. I see my Amtex flow is here based on a creating today, date and timestamp. And I can you know, work with it iteratively by clicking on this to edit that actual flow. What this does is give me now access to the data in a virtual way, gleaning all the advantages that Kevin talked about in his introduction, but it's very simple to set this up. Even as an IT person, they can do it with the studio, but we want to uh, support the business community so that they can do their own thing here. And actually then get available so that when you go into Web Focus Designer or the tool of your choice, um, even the dashboard of your choice, now these dashboards, your insights and all your reports can be driven and fed with virtual data. And like I say, real-time data, data from a whole array of different data sources in your organization, outside your organization, and everything available at your fingertips to make you more productive, make you get more insights into what's happening within the data, correspondingly your organization, and to drive more informed decisions based upon that. Okay, so that's my demonstration. Uh, I think I'm good to go and give me one second. And Tim, I'm going to pass it back to you. And Very I'm cool. going to stop sharing. Yes, I think I, I, think I stole it from you anyway, Joe. Yeah, I appreciate that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, again, yeah, go back to that same principle. I mean, just having that one place, and it's great to see that and see how you're creating these flows, but you still have one place to manage that centrally and secure, fast place to be able to do this. So when we talked about, you know, speed analytics and, and all the stuff that you saw coming out, that, that, that's one of the big keys to it is you've got one place where you can very quickly go and make these changes. There's a lot of flexibility into it where you can, in a secure environment, you know, add things, take things away and, and, uh, be able to very quickly react to to um, you know to the change in data needs that everybody has today. Um, so very cool, and and love seeing that in action. I, I think I've seen it I think three times now, and I've learned something new every time I watch it. So appreciate that, Joe.